Oh, how do I turn this crap off? Oh no! Well, you have an unruly sustain pedal and it's driving you absolutely nuts and bonkers and all that crazy stuff and you just can't figure it out and then finally you figure it out and it's reverse the polarity is reverse so when you step down on the pedal it doesn't sustain or when you take off the pedal it sustains what the heck is going on I have a little trick here I'll help you save the day and it's free so this is what a polarity is. So a lot of pe sometimes pedals will come with this thing with, you know, open on, open off. And basically what it means, some keyboards like to have their polarity one way and some keyboards like to have their polarity a different way. The best way to explain it is sustain pedals with a polarity as positive and you got sustain pedals with a polarity of negative. Yamaha sustain pedals are negative polarity normally close position like that you will have casio sustain pedals which are a positive and they are normally open like that and korg sustain pedals are positive like in the positive of a pregnancy test <laughs> so that is a korg for you <laughs> we got that out of the way thank god should you go out to Amazon and spend the 30 bucks and get yourself a polarity switching pedal that kind of looks like that? Mm, like that. Okay? No, you don't have to. We're going to use a program called this right here. This is a thing called MIDI Pipe. And what this thing does, we'll bring it over here. How does this work with Logic? Well, I'm glad you asked. So let's show you this. Let's open up our little MIDI studio that Mac has. It's kind of goofy, but all right, I get it. I'm not happy with Apple of late. They're kind of screwing people over with iPhones and everything else and not wanting to fix their own shit. Whatever. You know what? People are going to find out. They're just not going to buy your stuff anymore. That's what I say. All right, so I have this Technics keyboard. goes into an audio box. Like so, this is USB. This comes up by default. I created this. I just went and said out device. And I just accepted the defaults. The only thing I did was I just named it right here. Put in the model, you know, whatever. And then on the ports, I just double click that. And I just typed in a name. The mini in and out, that's how many mini ports it has. All right, we got that. Cool. You got that? I got that. Okay, we're good. And I only have one MIDI cable. It's coming out of the Technics. I don't need to go in because I'm not doing anything. It doesn't have sounds to control, so it just has piano, and that's it. And I don't really care for the piano. What I like about the Technics is it has a very nice, responsive piano. That feels like the real thing, almost. Weighted keys. Heavy sucker, but it works. And I use it as my control keyboard into an audio box. The bad thing about this piano is when I bought it, it had some weird, funky three pedal sustain system that uses like um, an S video cord or some kind of weird adapter. And I don't, I can't find one. So I use this guy at the analog factory. It's not connected to anything. Yep, it's not connected, but it is. See, because I plugged my sustain pedal into here. I have my, imagine a little sustain pedal. And it's plugged in the back of this. But the polarity got reversed. So when I press on the sustain pedal, I have no sustain. And when I let off, I have all the sustain. It should be the other way around. Then you're saying, well, how does it affect this one? Just wait. I'll show you. So we, ha we go in and we open up MIDI pipe. And the very first thing I do is I just click in here, say MIDI in. And I'll go in and I'll just pick my audio box. And it's the audio box, what it's connected to right there. 
I'll bring that in. That's all I have to do. Drop and drag. See? Goes like that. Oh. Mm. Ah, tired. Okay. And then on the other one, I just drop and drag and pick my analog factory. All right. Boom, boom. Then I pick this thing called control split. You will find it right here. Control split. But what I do is on my source, you're going to have the coding, like a MIDI value that comes in from the pedal, and it's always a 64, 0, 064. That's your sustain pedal. And I check this little thing, inverse, so it switches my polarity. And then I take my MIDI out. You can see there's a MIDI out right here. I could pick my keyboard again, like my audio box, and it'll play fine. But I did a little bit differently. I went in here, I went edit virtual outputs, and I created one, said MIDI output one. And that's what I have set right here. Now, here's the cool thing. Now I have this virtual output, MIDI in, MIDI in, control split, MIDI out. All right, cool. Check this out. Go into logic. You know, typical thing here I have. A retro synth and I have an audio channel and then I go on here and I just go to window I go MIDI environment and then I just go over here to this little thing in layer I go to my clicks and ports I think that's what it is yep and that is what it is clicks and ports and clicks and ports and clicks and ports yeah Whatever. I just kind of just drag this around. Whoa. Hello. Yeah, excuse you. Drag this around. So look right here. It says MIDI output one. Check that out. Oh, yeah, you're getting smart. You're seeing what I'm going to do now, aren't you? Yeah. So I, I just basically, I, I do is I just highlight this one and I delete it. And then we have to zoom in bum, 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 because Logic, when they created this thing, they're still stupid and retarded and they didn't make it for us guys with like bad eyesight and, and stuff like that. So I kind of have to look at it really carefully and make sure I pick the MIDI output and just drag it over in here like so. Boom. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Check this out. Watch this. I press on the pedal. See, it's moving. It's moving all the way down. 127 full value, up zero value, and it's 64. Remember, I told you that 64 is what we're looking for. Hey, that rhymes. <laughs> okay, see? So now we play something. That is how you do a sustain pedal override. Let me go over this one more time so that way you know what's going on. Make sure your MIDI box is hooked up. Me, I'm doing something a little weird here, but uh, it's kind of sort of the same thing. You hook your keyboard into your MIDI box. That's all you have to do. And you're saying, oh crap, my sustain pedal's all messed up. What do I do? I can't change it. You download this thing called MIDI pipe. And you just drop and drag in MIDI in. And you pick your interface that the keyboard's plugged into. See? And I pick that. You don't have to do what I did here because I'm doing something different. Just one MIDI in. Control split out with the 64. Because that's what we're looking for. Right? 
That's such a dumb rhyme. <laughs> and you hit reverse, inverse, not reverse, inverse. Because I can't read. And you're MIDI out. Just go in here. If it doesn't show it, you can go edit virtual outputs. Just say new virtual one. Done. MIDI out. Put one. Don't close it. You got to keep it open. And just minimize that. You can close this out. You'd be good. And then you go in here. Make sure that this MIDI output is connected. Take it off of some. And just connect MIDI output right there. Because this physical input section, you're overriding it with just MIDI output one right here. Please leave a big fat thumbs up. Let me know what you think. I'll do more of this kind of crazy MIDI hacking stuff. All right. Yeah. Whatever. All right. Remember, my friends, big gravy. Yeah. I hope this helps someone out there. Please subscribe. Give me a like. More of this networking kind of stuff with music. And if you have any questions, concerns, drop me a comment. I usually respond back within the hour or so. Remember, my friends, big gravy. Yeah.